Thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. It's been proven that sitting for large amounts of time is very unhealthy. With online schooling, art, playing games, and doing homework, I have to constantly sit down on my desk for more than 10 hours a day. That's not healthy, and I get constantly tired over having to be at my desk for the entire day. Although, with FlexiSpot's desk, you're able to change all that. You can change the elevation in your desk to make it so you don't have to sit down while working. And when you're done with it, you can always bring it back down in case you're tired of standing up. With their four keybinds, you can also preset it to any elevation you want, so you don't have to constantly fidget around to see which one's the perfect match for you. It also has a drawer so you can store any art supplies you have or anything. It also comes with two USB ports and a C port in case you need to charge your device. And this thing can go really high. Here's a comparison with my chair from its lowest setting to its highest setting. If you want to check out more FlexiSpot's desk, check out the link in my description below. Hey what's up, it's me, your favorite artist you're obviously subscribed to, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now this may be one of my best tutorials ever. This is Hair Tutorial The Sequel. Now why am I making a remake on this you ask? Look at this. This is garbage. Of course I'm going to remake it. So I kind of want to share with you some techniques that I've learned over the past two years of, you know, drawing. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Now, I do want to go over my brushes very quickly. So let me make a new canvas. The four brushes I'm going to be using is rough shading, airbrush tool, and then these two blurs right here. They're very important, and I'm going to go into detail on when you should use either. I am going to put these brushes in the description. So I'm very sorry for not doing those on my previous videos, but I will be doing that for this one. And then these hair highlights, I'm also going to link that, but it's going to be credited to the original post because I didn't make these hair highlights. It was another artist and I'm going to credit them in my description. Before we color though, I am going to go over some drawing tips when you're drawing hair. Three important tips that every artist should know. So first of all, you don't want to draw your hair in strips like these, separate lines. You know, a lot of beginners do this. Of course, they think that hair is in strands, so I'm going to draw them in strands. No, you need to you need to draw your hair clumped up so it feels easier to like comprehend and it's easier on the eyes. Number two, think of your hair as in bangs, side hair, and then back hair, because this helps you create unique hair to each of your characters. So here's my character's bangs. That's obviously the front hair. The side hair is going to be these things right here. And then the back hair is going to be this floof all back here. Now what this helps you to do is it helps you to create a clear hairstyle and something that isn't so messy. Here I'm going to open up another one of my drawings to show you. Here is Princess Peach. As you can see, it's very easy to distinguish her hair shape because there are the bangs, there is the side hair, and then there is the long back hair. This helps you section your hair easier, make it a little more easy on the eyes, and it helps you distinguish the it helps you also like distinguish the shading you're gonna do for everything. And number three, all hair originates from a source line. The mistake I made was calling it a source point. It's more of a line. So you know how on your head you have like this little like line of baldness and then all your hair comes from it? It's pretty much the same thing. Hair line. And then all your hair originates from that source. And it's very important to do that so it looks more a little bit realistic. Of course, if you're taking a different approach to art, you don't have to do that. So yeah, let's get to coloring. So you're first going to need a color scheme. I already have a video on how to create one. And yeah. So the first thing you want to do is pretty much do the base color of your hair. That's very easy to do. Even a beginner can do that. And then what you want to do is alpha lock it. Well, now what this does is that you can't color out the edges. And that's very useful for what we want to do. Uh, next thing you want to do is we're doing our first shading first shading thing. So we're going to take the second shading color. And now what you want to kind of think about is you want to shade in like the same kind of uh, Y axis. So what you want to do, what we're going to do is shade here, here, and here. And now why are we doing this? Well, generally hair is kind of like uh, weird in the way it's shaded. Uh, it's usually like in a gradient. And these gradients kind of take like a pattern like this. The reason they do that is because since hair is always bendy and since it's very like kind of smooth, it's going to do that. So you generally want to shade around these areas. And now what we're going to do is kind of like create little points or little uh, strips 
lines of the hair in like a pointy manner like this and now this kind of represents the hair layering on top of each other and that's kind of important because we need to show that there's a lot of hair in like these hair strands and so what we're going to do is just generally just outline where the hair strands are going to be like this the word i was trying to say is strokes by the way so what I'm doing right now is that I'm creating general strokes uh, to create the groundwork of what my details are going to be. So like I'm just kind of like scribbling, not scribbling, but I'm just creating strokes like on the lines that I've created. So then I can later uh, add more details and make these strokes more sharper. So that's what I'm going to do uh, after this step. This is pretty much our uh, base. This is our sketch this part may take you the longest considering that you got to focus on like the shapes and stuff and every single element after this kind of depends on how well you do on this step so now what we're going to do is we're going to define the shape of the hair now what you want to do is grab the base color and what you want to do is start making more sharper sh uh, strokes like this is supposed to kind of represent like the hair the hair strands so you kind of want to make sharper strokes on this part. So unlike the last step where we did general strokes and they were kind of wide, we're going to do more defined strokes. And when you're doing the shape of these, you kind of want to be in the mentality of a triangle because, you know, uh, these are going to be kind of wide and they need to be pointy at the edges. So, of course, the only shape that would describe is a triangle. So you want to make pointy figures. And you see, you see how these are becoming more defined pieces of hair. Continue that, doing that for the top of this layer. And, and sometimes you can even like do just a giant stroke in the middle of it. If you don't know the kind of pattern you want to do, just kind of like just do a straight line. Doesn't even matter. Uh oh, that's not what I meant to do. And the last one we gotta do is right here. And now you just want to do this for every single part of the hair. So bam, we barely got the middle of the hair done. Now let's do the bottom of the hair. This For this one, I kinda already did it because I kinda broke my steps the process I broke the process a little bit and now I'm gonna yeah and if you kind of feel like you made a mistake you can always go to the second part and kind of sharpen it from upward you can do this you can even add like other triangles for the bottom with the second shading color just so you feel like you get more like uh hair some tips I want to give for this step is to make sure that your like strokes are very dynamic. If you make them all very even, so like e uh, each stroke ends at the same level, it's going to look very weird and your eye is going to notice a pattern. What you need to do is be very random and be very dynamic with the strokes you're making. Make some of them long, make some of them very short, uh, make two in a row, make one, make them wide, make them different lengths, make them different widths, do all that. Because if you don't, then it's going to look very uh, symmetrical and your eye is going to catch it and make it look very weird. Another thing you want to do is around like the bottom of the bangs, as you can see on the side hair, I left the bottom part untouched. And that is because since each piece of hair and the side hair is one just long piece of hair, we need to represent that by just smoothing out. Because each of these strokes are meant to represent like one short piece of hair layered on top of another. But since the side hair is just one long piece of hair, then we just need to blur it out. All right, now that we kind of like defined our shapes a little bit more, you might kind of feel like it's a little bit like messy. You might feel like it's a little bit too sharp. And that's where the blur tools come in. So what I'm going to do is th the blur tool should be used for bigger shapes. And what I mean by bigger shapes is like these bottom parts of the hair, I'm going to just blur them. The reason we're doing this is to make sure that every stroke that we made is the same opacity on the bottom and it just transitions well into each other. Because if we don't, you're going to be able to see like the individual strokes that we made and we don't want that. And see, they're a little bit more smooth and out. They're not like you can't see like the individual strokes. Everything feels like one solid connected piece. 
And now what the close blur tool is used for is to stretch colors into like another color. So like, as you can see here, here's a triangle right here. What I'm going to do is kind of blur it in and out like that. So it feels like it's transitioning into the hair more smoothly. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to do this for some of them that I feel like are a little too harsh for my eyes. You obviously don't want to do it for each like individual triangle. You just want to do it for like the major ones. This is to make it feel like our strokes are transitioning more nicely into the base color. Next step with the uh, clothes blur, uh, you want to like take the bottoms of these middle parts and you want to stretch them out this way. Now the reason we're doing this instead of the blur tool, the regular blur tool, is that we want to stretch out the colors. We don't just want to blur them, we want to stretch them out. So I'm taking this blur tool and I'm kind of like uh, doing pushing back and pushing out like the colors so that they blur more with the bottom part you don't want to do these with the top parts but you want to do them with the bottom parts and these are a little bit more major brushish sizes and now see you get a more you know softer blending of the hair and it's not too sharp than it was before and this kind of helps make the hair look a little bit more softer more poofy and it generally gets rid of those two harsh strokes that you you probably messed up on and bam, we have our first shading color done. Now on to the next color. Now with this color, you want to focus less on making strokes and you kind of want to focus more on, you know, making outlines of those strokes. And I'm going to get into that. I'm going to show you how to do it and stuff. What you want to do, take your third color, rough shading, and you want to start kind of outlining the strokes that you made. So as you can see here, I'm outlining those triangles I made. Now you may be asking yourself, it's kind of redundant that we just kind of smoothed them out and now we're kind of making them sharp again. And yeah, it kind of is, but you know, it, it helps you see the bigger picture from an early start instead of from too late. So what we're going to do is simply outline those shapes. And after you outline them, you want to take the clothes blur and then from like the inside of the stroke, go down and you want to stretch these colors out down. So like, uh, pretend like you, so like put the blur brush inside the entire stroke and just push down on it. And now what these will do is it, it's going to help you, it's going to help the colors look a bit more smoother. The, once again, it's going to help, you know, stretch the colors into each other more and it's going to look more natural. You also kind of want to do it again for these parts like we did before. And it should look a lot like this. After you're done outlining and then blurring with the shade color, what you want to do is pick it again and then generally shade. And what I mean by that is like shade the hair then as you would with any other object. So the light isn't hitting here. It's not hitting here. It's not hitting here. And I can't really specifically tell you what the, color, the light is not hitting. You just need like a general, you just need a general understanding of how to shade. And then you want to shade with this color where the two, like where separate hair strand or hair groups meet and then once again we're going to blur it out down just to make it look more and you don't want to really blur these ones you can blur them out on the edges but like you need to show that light is absent on these parts so i don't really recommend blurring too much down here so it looks more sharper we need those sharp shadows too we can't just forget about the sharp shadows and i'm gonna kind of fix this because i feel like it looks a little bad and then once again Fix it by making it go down and up. And now, bang. You want to do that for every single one of these, uh, every single part where you did the triangles at. So I'm going to go ahead and do that.
now for now for areas that are already covered in this like uh in the second shading and don't really have like the quote unquote triangles to them you just want to you know generally shade the hair with the third color so as an example this part's already kind of filled this part's already filled with the second shading color so i can't really outline anything so like what we can do is just once again uh, i gotta take a color we can just generally shade it like hair we don't have to do anything specific or magical we can just generally shade it all right now the top of the hair sh is like one of the darkest parts of the hair so what we're gonna have to do let me fix that because it's annoying me what we're gonna do is take the second color and once again, we're going to do what we said. We're going to outline the little triangles we made up here. We're going to kind of just, you know, outline everything we have up here. Then we're going to blur them. Then we're going to generally shade where the hair clumps meet. Then, for the parts that have no spikes on them, we're just going to generally shade. And now we're going to actually kind of just kind of fill in the middle part with this color, the second shading color. And we're going to go, we're going to make some spikes with the first shading color that kind of lead into the middle part of the hair. and there we're done with the second shading color don't do the middle part the middle this part right here is supposed to be a little bit more subtle and so you don't really want to do that part these last three colors are only meant to uh exaggerate the depth of the hair you know we're trying to make it a point of fact that the back of the hair is in the back and that the front of hair is in the front so we're not going to touch the spikes at all anymore okay we're not going to use those you're just going to have to generally shade with these last three colors and you just need to exaggerate the depth of the hair so we're going to take this color and immediately we're just going to color the back hair because the back hair is going to be the darkest part of the hair and places that are covered the most by other layers of hair is going to be the darkest part. Other parts that are going to be really dark is where hair covers them, like these parts right here. And the other darker parts are going to be in the middle of these hair clumps, because these hair clumps are folding over each other. After this, we're going to come back to the top part of the hair. We're going to once again fill it, but only this small part. And you want to start creating triangles that come outside of it. That should follow your previously made triangles too. So it has a sense of flow into them. And there. You are done with your fourth shading color. Now for these last two, they should... Th these last two are resorted to the darkest of the dark parts of the hair. So with this fifth hair, hair color, we're just going to... These should be in the places where your fourth shading color would be. And not in all of them. So these are resorted for the darkest of the dark darks. So we're going to go back. And we're just going to minimally put these in our darkest of the dark spots. See, that's really all I needed. And then for this last, last color, this is only going to be in the back hair. 
this color right here is only going to be used for the back hair. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some adjustments where these hair, do you see these little like disconnected hair parts? Like you can tell this is one sh shape, but it's disconnected. I'm going to make a line of the third shading color connecting these points like that. Some of them may go nowhere and I'm just, just still going to add on to them. So like that. And now what I'm going to do is take the closed blur brush and I'm just going to push in the base color into them. So it feels like these lines are kind of fading into the base color for this one too. And I'm going to do it for this one. And I'm just going to push in the color inside them. This last color, you may be wondering why it kind of separates itself from these five colors. It's because this is the indirect lighting color. This is, you know, this makes like the, um, you know, the hair look a little bit more pop flash. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take the airbrush tool and just color, just subtly add them to this back hair. And now for where, where the darkest parts of the hairs meet. So like this here, this is like one of the darkest parts of the hair. I'm going to add this color here instead. Actually, hold up. You should apply this color only where the darkest hair color is. Uh, I'm breaking that rule very easily right now. So I'm going to add the darkest hair color to parts where I want it. And then I'm going to apply this indirect lighting color to those parts of the hair. I'm going to blend it so it looks a little bit more softer. I'm also going to blend this outward. And bam, this is our base hair color. Now, some parts may look a little wonky, but we're going to fix that. A lot of the steps after this are optional. It kind of depends if you want your hair more vibrant. If it looks vibrant enough, then you can just skip everything I'm going to do. But um, if you don't think it looks vibrant enough, then we're going to do these preceding steps. Now, what you want to do is add a clipping multiply layer. And uh, depending on like which one you like, I'm going to say the third one, you're, you're going to want to outline the same places where we made the spikes so in the middle the bottom and the top part and once again you can change it just alpha lock it and just pick which color you think looks the nicest so no i don't want that one and i feel like this one looks the nicest so we're gonna go ahead with this one next what we're gonna do we're gonna create another multiply layer and we're gonna take this we're going to take the indirect lighting color and just darken the part like the back of the hair and like parts that are like completely covered by the light. So like right here, this part's completely covered by the light. I got to fix that. And erase a little bit here. And what else is covered by the light? This part's covered by the light. And this is like just in places that it's just completely absent of light. And then you're just going to want to adjust the layer. Again, if you don't like this color, you could just use the darkest color in your hair. Just really depends on preference. I would just use the indirect lighting color. And then just adjust it so it looks like this part of the hair is behind. Now what you want to do is create a new overlay layer and take your skin color and just lightly gloss over the bangs. You can either use normal or overlay depending on what looks better. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead with normal. And you just kind of want to add an underline to your bangs with the skin color. Now what this does is add, it adds a sense of reflection against the skin color since the light's going to be bouncing to the hair and reflecting back. You can also adjust this to where you think it looks the best. Next, if you feel as your hair is not as vibrant as you want it, we can create a new hard light layer. Take your color and kind of make it a very saturated version of that color. And right here, you just want to make a big stroke of that color. And once again, like where the light hits, you just want to make a big stroke of that color. And this is only if you feel as if your color doesn't feel as vibrant as if, uh, as you wanted it. So again, 
two strokes of lines and then adjust it to where you think it looks the best. Now what we want to do is make it add glow layer, take your base color and make a ring on the top of the hair. And this is if your sun is like coming on top of her head. And then you can adjust it to how bright you want it. I'm going to want it like noticeably, but not too noticeable. So I think that's fine. Next come the highlights. Now this is like a big part in this step is your art style. Now I did link a bunch of hair highlights in the description. This is made by someone else. So I will get credit to them in the description. These hair highlights are very like... Uh, they're very stylistic and like there's a bunch of different ones that you can play with My personal favorite is this one because it feels very harsh and I like like the contrast of it So it's like completely white. That's what I like But of course you can use different ones this part step this part of the step is very, you know Stylistic so just play around with what you like So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new normal layer and then just try to follow where this shadow is with the highlight and then try to follow the curvature of your head. If it doesn't follow it exactly, we'll make it follow it. So what I like to do is I'd like to take an eraser tool and just kind of following like the flow of the hair. I like to make shapes that kind of help it because so sometimes it's like it's not going to fully conform to like the shape of the hair. So you got to make it so you can erase some parts. You can erase some parts in the middle. Just make sure that it follows the flow of your hair and doesn't do its own thing okay now that we have our highlights this entire part is my style so if you want to follow my style you can follow what i'm going to do next but this entire part is now my style part of my style is that i like to outline where the light hits the most with a harsh pen so i like uh i like to outline the outer part of the hair with where light hits the most and I'm going to connect it with this part. So I'm going to do that. This part also hits a lot with the light. And then over here, it hits a lot with the light. And then I accidentally... And boom. Now we have our highlights. Now I like to do the same thing, but with the indirect lighting color. Not exactly the same color, but I'm going to make it a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to use this color. So now what I'm going to do is in the same way that I did it up here where the light hits the most, I'm going to do it on the opposite side of where the light hits the most. Again, this is my style. You don't have to follow it if you don't want to, but I'm doing this because I think it kind of like adds to the shape a little bit more. And I'm going to make it follow the inside of the hair. And now for my old drawing, you may be thinking, where did this old part of the lighting go? And it now conforms to this style of my hair. What I like to do is that I like to take the rough shading and then I like to kind of scribble where the flow with the flow, like in like taking in mind, like the flow of the hair, I like to scribble here. And then what I like to do is take a transparency brush and then just kind of like make uh, arcs in the side of the hair. Once again, taking into consideration the flow of the hair. And now what I what I now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color to this color because I didn't really like the other color. And then I'm going to lower the opacity a bit so then it blurs more with the pink color. <laughs> and now lastly, I'm gonna do some finishing touches. I'm going to take this highlight layer, I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to change one of the highlights into the second coloring layer, and then I'm gonna change this to multiply. Now what I'm going to do is Gaussian blur this a little bit. 
so like about right there and then unhide my highlight layer and now stylistically it adds to it so now it looks like it's popping out a little bit more with it and now I'm gonna fix something I'm gonna do my hard light and because I feel like my hair doesn't look very vibrant I'm gonna add the saturated once again the saturated pink I'm just gonna completely fill it with that color and then I'm gonna lower the opacity very low and then just turn it up until I feel like I'm satisfied with the color this just changes kind of like the color like, I don't feel like my color scheme kind of fit well. It was, like, less vibrant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the hard light and then just change it until I'm satisfied with my color. You don't have to do this if your color looks already kind of vibrant. I just did it because I feel like I chose, like, a kind of bad color scheme. So now I'm going to change this to one of these colors. And now, once again, I'm going to make a new color. And I feel like I kind of lost, like, my indirect color from the complete like a bunch of filters that I added so what I'm gonna do is go back and just add in those indirect lighting colors into the darkest parts of the hair and by darkest parts I mean mostly like the back of the hair you don't have to do it for places like these because it kind of already fits in with it I'm just doing it to the back of the hair I also feel like this part of the hair is kind of bland so what I'm going to do is kind of fix that color by making it more purple. And I lost my effects. I'm going to make it more purple. I feel like it looks kind of bland over here. So I'm going to add a purple. And that is the concluding result of the hair tutorial. Now, before this tutorial, I did have to spend some time making the initial drawing that I had to copy. So if you want to see that one for yourself, here it is. I want to say thank you guys so much for 130,000 subscribers. I know I haven't made a special yet, but I just want to tell you right now that it's that I'm super grateful for everything you guys have given me. And I am so happy that I have a voice to teach other beginners about anime art because it was always my dream. And I really like helping people. So I just want to say thank you guys. And I'm very glad that I got to help a lot of people out. And once again, if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you do. And I just want to say thank you. I'll see you in the next video.